What kind of transitions will work best for YouTube videos? You all know this, fancy transitions that you can add in post, but many aspiring YouTubers don't even consider that it's unprofessional and no large studio uses them. Instead, they use transitions that I'm gonna show you today. What are these transitions? Let's figure it out. Hi, my name is Arthur, this is the Mobile Vlog, and a quick side note here, you have probably heard about some of the transitions I'm gonna mention, but try to keep an open mind. They may seem too obvious, but they're obvious until you start using them and realize that they simply work and you should use these transitions all the time. So transition number one, the basic cut. The rough cut, the clean cut, you name it, but in general, it's just an old-fashioned cut. And the transitions we're gonna be talking about are variations or stylizations of the basic cut, and you should understand understand how it works in any scene. For example, you're filming some sort of action, a guy is doing something, and to make a simple action more interesting, we add different angles to the scene, wide shot, medium shot, close-up shot, detail, and so on. In a dialogue scene, there is always the basic cut, we're just switching angles between the two or more characters. If you decide to add some fancy transitions to the scene, it will look unnecessary and will distract a viewer from the main action. This is bad, so don't do it. Here you can only use the basic cut and when you add this simple cut you should keep in mind the angle between the shots what do I mean by that if you decide to jump from a wide shot to a close-up shot you should remember that the angle between these two shots is not more than 30 degrees otherwise you will see a very rough cut that looks like a jump this leads us to the next transition the jump cut in some cases jump cuts might create an amateur feeling it will seem like an editor was too lazy to add some b-roll on top of it but you can use use the jump cut in more creative ways. For example, the jump cut can be used as a way of speeding up time. If someone is in a rush, the jump cut will make you feel this intense moment. Or let's say you're making a commercial, you cannot make it longer than one minute, but the shot is too long. Now you have three options. You either cut the shot in the middle, speed up the shot, or use jump cuts. And here's a little trick for you guys. Sometimes you can just crop in to hide the jump cut. This way you create an illusion of a second camera and and it doesn't look too distracting. Jump cuts are also helpful for adding a creepy feeling to your scene, an effect when character is quickly moving through space. That's creepy. And you can use jump cuts in videos like this one with still background. You can easily crop in and it's not so distracting. Besides, on YouTube, jump cuts will help you make your videos more engaging. But don't use jump cuts too often. In most cases, you should cover it with some B-roll. Use jump cuts in exceptional cases when you're 100% sure that it's applicable and won't distract your viewer. The Mobavi Vlog team has launched a special summer sale for subscribers to the channel. We have collected the most popular programs and effects to make up our 12 special offers. There are ones that include effects created specifically for YouTube and other social media, there are ones that include annual subscriptions to the Movavi best-selling programs, and the ones that include both. Let's take a look at Movavi Unlimited. This unique annual plan includes 11 of the best Movavi programs and unlimited access to Movavi FX Store. The price of Movavi Unlimited is already lower than the total cost of all one-year versions of the same products if purchased separately. And especially for our subscribers, we give an additional discount on this option. Simply put, for the price of one program, you can get video editing tools, photo retouching apps, screen recording, game capture, a bunch of useful utilities for work and study, and vast number of video effects. If you don't feel like getting so many things at once, you can try the bundle that includes an annual subscription to Movavi Video Editor Plus and the Effects Store. If you already have Video Editor Plus or Video Suite, you might like the Effects Store subscription as a standalone option. The sale is underway until August 26 and if you want to check out not only this bundles but all the sale options just follow the link in the description or pinned comment to get to our official web page and enjoy your shopping. The following two transitions are kind of well known but I'm gonna feel guilty for not sharing them in this video because they play a massive role. The third transition is the L cut meaning you cut your video and audio with the shape of an L. Simply put it's a basic cut the difference is in the audio. The audio of the first shot goes under the video of the second shot. You can notice this in many dialogue scenes where one person starts talking and then we see the reaction of the second person. Number four is the J cut. It's the same as the L cut but vice versa. It's a simple cut but again the difference is in the audio. The audio of the second shot goes under the video of the first shot. Usually you can find this cut as a transition between two scenes with different visuals.
J cut might be used in dialogue scenes as well. And when you edit a scene, I recommend mixing J cuts with L cuts. This will dive viewers even better into your video. Transition number five is cutting on action. It's a very powerful tool that might turn an amateur looking video into a professional looking video really fast. When I edit an action scene, I always keep my eye on movements and you should look for the peak moment of a movement and cut it exactly at this moment. Let's take an obvious example, a fight scene. You should cut it in the punch moment because if you cut it at the beginning of the movement, it will look more boring and not as interesting as it could be. So keep your eye on movements in your shots and cut on action. Transition number six is the match cut. It's one of my favorites and I think viewers enjoy it even more because it's visually satisfying. If in the first shot you see an object and in the second shot you see the same object or a different object but with the same shape and movement, then you know it's a jump cut. With this technique you have the power to create many beautiful transitions without using any digital transitions. You've probably seen the transitions where a guy is standing in a red shirt then he jumps and bam the shirt is now painted with a different color. This is also the jump cut. When we were filming a documentary about a brick factory we had to show the main people in this company and we also had to show the unity of this team. So we decided to film them staring at the camera and with a match cut the transition happens. It looks cool in this context. Number seven is the camera movement cut. You can call it the match cut but it's a more specific match cut related to camera movement. For instance there's a quick pan to the right at the end of the first shot so the second shot should start with the same quick pan to the right. Then you just stick them together and the movement will hide the cut making it almost invisible. So again just try to experiment with different movements, use different objects as transition points and it will look cool. But don't overuse it otherwise it will get boring and predictable really fast. Number eight is the invisible cut. One more seamless transition that is similar to the previous transition but the cut is usually hidden with the all black or all white frame. Sometimes the cut is hidden with motion blur like when a person passes by or the camera passes by an object, eventually this transition will be almost invisible or fully invisible in some cases. Like in the film 1917, this transition was used 34 times and viewers that know nothing about video editing think that the entire movie is one long tracking shot but if you look closely you will notice that cuts are hidden with the all black frames or when the camera is passing by a wall or something. Again it looks cool but don't overdo it, use them occasionally. Number nine is parallel editing, also known as cross cutting. Let's say you have two actions happening at the same time. It can be a dialogue scene from two different locations, they're on the phone or for example people are playing the hide and seek game. To make us feel what they feel the best way is to use cross cutting. Eventually it will create an illusion of two actions happening at the same time. It makes your video more interesting and it helps a lot in increasing your audience retention. Number 10 is the smash cut. Essentially this is the audio transition driven by action that happens in the video. At the end of the first shot it's quiet, at the beginning of the second shot it's very loud or vice versa. The more obvious example will be a scene with a dream, everything is quiet and then the character is thrown out of it. And it happens with a big sound. I added this transition in my short film The Sin. Smash cut is an effective way to keep your audience engaged and thrilled. Now smash the like button if you like the video, click on one of these videos to educate yourself even more and I will see you in the next video.